The issue of drunk driving started in 1897 when a man from London named George Smith, who was a taxi driver and was on the job, was drinking and driving one night when he crashed into a building. After being sentenced to jail, he pleaded guilty and was fined 25 shillings, which is less than a quarter in today's American money. In America, just a few years after the incident in London, New York became the first state to create drunk driving laws, which simply prohibited driving while intoxicated. However, there was no limit to how much alcohol was allowed in your body while driving. Even though citizens knew it was illegal to drink and drive, the danger of it was not made widely known until someone decided to do something about it. Candace Leitner, who is better known as Candy, was born on May 30th, 1946. Little did she know that 34 years later that her life and many others would be changed forever. In her early life, Candy moved a lot due to both her parents being in the United States Air Force. She did well in school and her father always said that she was a rebellious person. After finishing high school, Candy attended American River College and soon was married to Steve Leitner. They then later had three children, twins, Carrie and Serena, and a son, Travis. Unfortunately, after a few years after disagreeing and arguing, the couple split apart. After the divorce, Candy decided to move on in a new town. She got a job as a real estate agent to support herself and her children. Her children at a young age were all involved in some sort of auto-related injuries. Her son was hit by a driver while playing in the yard as a young boy. He suffered from brain damage and broken bones. Candy's other twin daughter, Serena, was 18 months old when she was injured. A car rear-ended Candy's car and caused injury to her and Serena. Although Travis and Serena were involved in car accidents, Harry had the most impacting one of all. On May 3, 1980, on her way to a church carnival, 13-year-old Carrie M. Ann Leitner was walking when she suddenly was struck from behind by a drunk driver. Her body was thrown 125 feet and was so badly mutilated that none of her organs could be donated. The driver passed out and when he came to, he had realized he had killed the young girl and drove away. An hour after the incident, Carrie passed away. I I'm sorry we couldn't save her. Oh no, no. Maybe Carrie died. She's dead? Yes. Carrie... died? Clarence Bush, the man who killed Carrie, was a repeat DWI offender. Killing Carrie was his fifth offense in four years. After Carrie passed away, Candy asked the officer who dealt with the accident if the man who committed this crime would go to prison. The officer responded with, Lady, you'll be lucky if he sees any jail time at all much less prison. The law at the time simply prohibited driving while intoxicated, but there was no set definition of what level of intoxication qualified as drunk driving. Candy was shocked to find that the man who killed her daughter only spent a mere 48 hours in jail. One night, when Candy was at a bar with her sister, they discussed ways to deal with her anger. Candy decided to turn her anger into motivation and that she needed to alert the public about the situation. On May 7, 1980, Candy Leitner quit her job as a real estate agent and used her savings to put together an organization called MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Candy created MAD to stand up against drunk driving. MAD believes that driving impaired by alcohol or other drugs is a serious crime and that the crashes that result are not accidents. Candy would tell Carrie's story to anyone who would listen. She would tell politicians, judges, and district attorneys. People started listening and they joined Candy in her crusade by protesting and speaking out. MAD tapped the expertise of more than 60 researchers, attorneys, advocates, business people, and law enforcement officials, each armed with science, data, or informed opinions on how to reduce drunk driving deaths and injuries. Within months, Candy was testifying before legislators and MAD became one of the country's largest and most influential nonprofit organizations. Candy worked tirelessly for years to change public opinions change judges' behavior, and push for tough new legislation. Candy put her finger on the problem when she says that if MAD really wants to save lives, it will go after the real problem drivers. She clearly stated the importance between just drinking alcohol and driving drunk. It was clear that the media was with her and MAD when she delivered her first speech. When the press heard Carrie's story, they jumped up and ran out the door to call photographers. The emotional impact of her message led to a dramatic change in public opinion. Before Candy Leitner told the story of her daughter, intoxication and DWI were not taken seriously. However, when it was announced that drunk driving crashes killed someone every 23 minutes 
and were the leading cause of death for people under 34, including children. It struck a chord. In 1980s, some 27,000 alcohol-related fatalities occurred in the United States. In 1982, Congress passed a legislation that rewarded states that raised their minimum drinking age to 21. If the states did this, they were rewarded with money for funding. Mad hoped that raising the minimum drinking age to 21 would cause the drunk driving rights to go down. This was one of Mad's most significant accomplishments. Mad believes that drinking itself isn't the issue. It's when you drink and drive, that is when it's the issue. Candy said herself, I didn't start Mad to deal with 